Today I'm making simple garlic and onion pork chops. That's all you're going to need. A little bit of butter to start cooking the garlic and onions in. I took some regular cut pork chops, made sure I washed them because at the store I get them at, sometimes a little piece of the bone when they cut them get embedded in the front of the flesh and that's not pleasant. So I'm starting off with about a tablespoon of butter. I'll take probably half of that out. Then I'm going to add about a teaspoon of garlic. I like a lot of garlic in mine. And I'm going to chop up maybe two rings of onion around here. Maybe just one thick ring. And I'll put the leftover onion in my handy dandy little onion keeper here. Seals in the smell, keeps it fresh enough. I simply dice the onion. And I'm adding about, I don't know what this would be, maybe, I like a lot of garlic. So probably about a half a tablespoon of pre-minced garlic I bought at the grocery store. I like having it on hand. Less labor intensive than having to peel and crush garlic every time you want to make a quick recipe. Now if I leave that onion and garlic in here for the whole time that I'm cooking this, it'll burn to a crisp. So I'm just going to kind of season the pan with this and that will impart some of the flavor onto the pork chop. I'm cooking this over medium heat, and it's still cooking a little too fast, so if I notice it's starting to brown too much on me, I just pull it directly off the heat for a minute and let it cool down. As soon as these become translucent, I'm going to take the uh, onions and garlic out put it aside. If you notice, I added a little bit more butter because I want there to be left over medium liquid in the pan that will help to impart the flavor onto these pork chops when I start. I find an easy way to do this is to pull the vegetables I want to pull aside off to the side of the pan and then lay in a pork chop on the other side. I'll do that a couple of times until it's put into a little pile and then I'll scoop it out. I was able to get the lion's share of onion and garlic out of the pan. Any little remnants that are left might burn but it shouldn't be enough to acronize the flavor of the pork chop. At this point I'm going to be adding uh, a little bit more garlic and onion flavor with some onion powder and some garlic powder. I'm also going to add a little bit of salt, pink Himalayan sea salt, and some pepper. I have a fresh grinder, but I don't want to fill it right now and it's empty. So I'll just use some McCormick's black brown pepper. Let that cook on that side for a few more minutes. If the oil starts to get dark like that, like it's burning, just keep it moving. Stir it around a little bit. You want to develop uh, as well, as, I believe it's called the Maillard reaction, and that is the reaction of sugars inside of meat proteins caramelizing. That caramelizing, in my opinion, gives the meat a really good flavor. So, generally, you'd like to cook this stuff in a cast iron skillet if you had the chance. I have one, but again, I think it's a little bit more pain than it's worth for this quick dinner. Um, the cast iron pan has a better chance of building up that really good tasting See this little blackening right here that's taking place? These little crystals here that form? That's the Maillard reaction taking place in the pork. It's turning those sugars, those proteins into, into sugars and sweetening it up. And it's a really good flavor in my opinion. So I'm going to leave this now sitting on this side for another five minutes or so. Keep moving it so it doesn't burn and the oil doesn't burn. Pork used to be very, very greasy, but over the years... They've changed the breeding of pork so that the fat content is very low in most commercially available pork. Uh, that's why I needed to add the butter when I first started, especially so that I could sweat the um, onions and garlic. When these pork chops are almost done, maybe three minutes left to cook, I'm going to add this back into it to really brown it up and give it a good flavor. Also, I'll, I'll season this side, at least with the garlic and onion powder. Quick little service announcement concerning the non-stick pan that I'm using. This pan is covered in a ceramic coating. I used to swear by the um, all-clad and the um, Cathalon pans that I owned, but they were covered in a DuPont Teflon. And when Teflon is heated to certain temperatures, it releases pretty noxious gas. Now that gas may not affect every individual the same way. What most people experience when they burn their pans unknowingly is they experience flu-like symptoms. Headache, uh, 
stuffy nose. But it has been known to kill small animals. If uh, people have a parrot or a parakeet in their kitchen, I've heard of them dropping dead from the fumes created from Teflon. If you don't believe me, look it up. I don't know if it's just in my head, but I really prefer the flavor of fresh cracked pepper. So I filled up my grinder. I'm going to grind some on this side. You want to be careful when you're putting spices into a hot pan because some spices actually can burn and change the flavor profile. So I'm going to just put some on the top, flip it once, and it should be good. You may notice I like a lot of seasoning on mine, a lot of salt. Uh, it's not salt, a lot of pepper, and the garlic powder, the onion powder. Um, I like those strong, bold flavors. If you notice now what happened by leaving it setting for about five minutes on one side, we've got a nice golden brown, a little bit of that crust that I really like the flavor of. Uh, and it's almost done. We were about two minutes on the first side, about five minutes on it, when we flipped it, and now we're going back to the first original side again for another two or three minutes and it should be cooked thoroughly. So just about now is when I'll add back the onion and garlic mixture to caramelize that. Actually since I'm cooking two more pork chops what I'm going to do is um, take these out in about a minute or so leave that mixture in and kind of like when you cook bacon you develop your own cooking oil because there is enough fat still on these pork chops simply because of the cut that's in between the piece of meat the meat itself isn't interlaced with as much fat as they used to be back in the old days, at least according to Alton Brown, my food hero. Um, but there's enough fat on here that it's actually releasing some into the pan that'll take up the flavor of the pepper, of the, uh, not pepper, the garlic and onions that'll help season the next batch. It's been about two or three minutes, and I've realized it's very difficult to keep this glass cooktop not looking like a greasy mess when you're cooking fried pork chops. Again, this whole time I've cooked this on uh, medium heat. If you so desire to get a better a better sear on it, you could always turn it up when there's no onions or peppers inside of there. But again, this side's getting a nice coat, nice color on it. I'm almost, I'm pretty happy with the way that's coming along. I might actually turn this up myself for just a minute, give it a little bit more sear because I don't want it to be overcooked. Growing up eating pork, my mother and other people I knew always overcooked it because they were afraid of problems of salmonella and other things, but. In recent days, that's been more under control to my understanding, and people are actually eating medium-cooked pork. I don't do that. I cook mine well, but I don't cook it to shoe leather. I'm going to turn the heat up just for a minute, maybe to medium-high. Let that set for a second while stirring onions and garlic. They're getting a little bit, a little bit, I wouldn't say too brown, but they're getting, they're on the verge of being overdone. See a small piece of garlic is starting to turn a little black? We don't want that. So I'm going to actually pull these pork chops now even though I may not be as concerned as I used to be or maybe as others were like what people my mom's generation were with having it uh, completely cooked I still maintain really clean habits anytime I touch anything any raw pork I immediately wash my hands if I, anything I touch after touching the raw pork I wash I actually go as far as any cooking utensils that touch the raw pork, I will wash them once this meat has browned so that I'm not putting back the bacteria that may have existed prior on it when I take it out of the pan. So I don't use the same appliance or utensil to place the raw meat in and then take that raw meat out because that kind of defeats the purpose. And I also will cook the meat all the way through. When I'm done, I'm probably going to add, well not done, when I'm almost done, I'm probably going to add that mixture of pepper, um, onions and garlic back in here at the last minute because I really like the flavor of it when it's cooked well. Now I turn the temperature up just a little bit up to medium high and it's a little bit too high for this. It's kind of burning, so little remnants of garlic that are left in the pan and the garlic, the oil itself is kind of smoking. I don't know if you can see the whisk and smoke coming up. That's a little bit too hot. It's going to stick up the kitchen and maybe make a more acrid flavor that I don't really want. So I turn it back down to just about medium. Now that may be too done for some of you, but that's what I call a perfect looking pork chop. I even like the little burnt pieces of garlic and onion on there. If you don't want it to go that far, just don't add them back in or add them in for less time. Now this pork chop had a few minutes to rest and you see from about 10 minutes of total cooking, the pork chops are done all the way through and they're actually not dry, it's nice and juicy. So maybe a simple dish, but in case you have any mystery, try this recipe. It's delicious. 
And for those of you from my generation, you may want to have this with some applesauce. As Peter Brady once said, pork chaps and apple shash makes for a good meal. Now that it's all done, bon I like to dip my pork chop in a little bit of applesauce. Delicious. You really taste the flavor of the garlic and onion coming through at every bite. Nice, easy, fast meal. Sometimes I'll pair something like this with a little uh, wilted kale and baby, baby kale and baby spinach uh, and some cauliflower rice. I'll do some videos on that sometime soon, how to make cauliflower rice taste like some of the best fried rice you've ever had. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share. Also, hit the subscribe button to see more videos like this in the future.